Now, you can't say that if the Amazon forest disappears that, you know, we'll have a global catastrophe. I mean, it's not that connected uh, to key processes at, at a global scale. But on the other hand, what you can say is that, well, the Amazon has the largest uh, repository reservoir of biodiversity in the world. That, no one would dispute that. Maybe he realizes this is what I've wanted all along. No one knows what we can, might ultimately find in that forest. The Amazon rainforest is one of the most beautiful places on the earth, full of undiscovered plants, animals, possible new medicines, and it's Dr. Robert Walker's research lab. Nice base. If you lose the forest and convert it to agriculture, you, you, you're going to lose a huge fraction of the earth's chemical Re organic chemical resources. And so that is something to be avoided, I think, at all costs. Walker takes numerous expeditions to the Amazon for his research. This time, he's working on a National Science Foundation project. So, well, the fundamental research issue was the, uh, we're studying what's called forest fragmentation. And this is just one of Walker's many Amazon adventures. The debate right now is on the magnitude of deforestation you need in order to drive the system to extinction. And there are people who say, oh, it's 30 percent, people who say it's 60 percent. No one really knows, but the point is it's there. A lot of activity now, 8 o'clock, everybody's waking up. So our expedition was to take a look at the, at the battleground and to try to understand the forces that were possibly at work. With a tough truck, satellite images, and plenty of research questions, Walker and his Brazilian colleagues set out for a long trip down unmapped areas of the Trans-Amazon Highway. This is no vacation. There are some potholes for you, not pingala. The tough trip is worth the time to check out areas of the Amazon rainforest that are rarely seen. We, we discovered, this is the logging frontier now. There were at least 10 large operations in this area, and we saw people the day before, we had seen, on the way there, we had seen a lot of trucks with sawn wood coming easterly. God knows where he's going. He's coming from the west. Although the rainforest is beautiful with unique animals and landscape, the road is littered with possible danger around every bend. We get right into it and we suddenly start seeing big logs right there. I mean, they're logging literally right off the, the trans -Amazon. It's a new place, a new area of exploitation. And right to the right of us is a big logging truck, and they're getting ready to put the logs up there. And so we drive and we go, uh-oh. This is the middle of the Amazon, far away from civilization. There's illegal logging and other activities that would be dangerous to disturb. And suddenly a man came up to us. He says, you just did something very bad. And, and we said, what? He said, well, you filmed out here without getting permission. The research group stumbles upon a gold mine in the middle of the forest. Things that come to mind were the more dramatic incidents, of course, and one was a gold mine. It's a, an active gold mine, uh, what they call a garimpo, it's a wildcat or gold mine. And these are interesting places, they're dangerous places, and I don't know that anybody has actually filmed one actively. But we're at the gold mine. Looks like someone dropped a bomb out here. This is the exposed surface after the gold miners have stripped the trees, the soils, and it, everything is slowly collapsing into a big pit. I lifted up the camcorder and just started filming. There's a place that buys gold. And as I said, we, we know gold mines have a reputation for violence. That services the garimpo or the gold mine. And on the way out, we, we talked to people and they said, well, you know, better be careful. That place, there's a lot of logging. There are a lot of uh, crazy people there. Gente uh, brava. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they said, oh, and, and also there are a lot of pistoleros there. And pistoleros are, of course, uh, gunmen. With some slick talking. Walker gets out of trouble. And so we basically told this guy, you know, we really screwed up. You were very, very sorry. We'll, we'll never do it again. We'll leave if you want to. And we were out practically on our knees. But within a, a five minutes, he was our best friend, slapping us on the back, saying, oh, of course you can film here. He was the president of the, of the, of the community. This is the president of the uh, community. So the team gets interviews from the workers to see what's going on in the area. He responded to, to gold fever. He heard there were people here, and he came, and there were more than 5,000. Our observations in the field go to 
identifying the good things we saw and the bad things we saw. We have stopped at a bridge and are enjoying this sign from the Ministerio dos Transportes, the Minister of Tra Ministry of Transportation. The research here combines technology with boots on the ground research. And so it's the satellite imagery, the, 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 the data and the imagery that does not speak to you. Okay, the only way you understand its true story is to get into the ground, uh, get, get, at, uh, get at ground level and, and talk to people. Walker's research here will help us understand human impact on our environment and geography today and into the future. While Walker and his team find negative human impact, they also find some areas of positive change. Well, they finally made it to the end of the Trans-Amazon. We are all exhausted, but we have smiles on our faces. And it shows that research doesn't always take place in a lab on campus. Sometimes you have to go out, get muddy, and travel hundreds of miles down the Trans-Amazon Highway.